I am very glad to invite him on stage. He is ex chairman and managing director of Shipwreck Corporation of India. And he is currently uh, 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 chief and chairman of MAPS. Uh, I'm not wrong. And uh, it's my pleasure it's, uh, to welcome. Mr. Sarve Sachi Hajra for the special address of the day and I request everybody to please welcome him with a round. Good afternoon. As customary, let me first thank the organizers and our travel time board for affording me this opportunity to share some of my views with this gathering and for kindly inviting me here. I have a presentation which I did uh, forward, the email was sent to the organizers a couple of days back. I don't know whether it has been circulated or not. But I don't propose to make any presentation. Looking at the auditorium and looking at the time, I would like just to talk a little bit on shipping. Firstly, I saw in the agenda there was no participation from shipping. Of course, I know this is the Indian port summit, but nevertheless, just like shipping cannot exist without port, similarly ports cannot, I and mean, they don't have any commercial reason to exist without shipping. So I reckon shipping is always relevant to anything, partnering to any, any conference of the maritime sector and particularly ports. As was mentioned, I also am presently the chairman of Maritime Awareness Program Society, which is just an NGO, MAPS. So I think I will spend a couple of minutes in just trying to highlight the importance of shipping in general to the world at large. Shipping, unfortunately, is a silent industry. It's, of course, a secondary industry. The demand is completely Right demand depends on the international trade, the demand of shipping. And since not too many world citizens live on the coast, people don't think of shipping. If you ask a very knowledgeable elite person owning maybe BMW, Mercedes, many other cars, that how does he think the petrol or diesel which is used in his car has reached the petrol pump, he will only think of the tanker lorries. But for a country like India, let me remind all of you, many of you may be knowing, 80% of the crude requirement is made through imports. So, but for the tankers, all our petrol pumps will run dry. But unfortunately, as I said, shipping has not been able to project itself to the world at large. The erstwhile Secretary General of IMO, a very good friend of mine, Mr. Metropolis, had made a very famous quotation that but for shipping half the world would starve and even the balance half would not survive because they would freeze. This is said because in terms of volume, 95% of international trade is moved by shipping. In terms of value, it's about 70%. So, the entire grain, you know, the point of origin and point of consumption in the world are almost always different. So, grain is produced by certain countries and many a times they are consumed by other countries. So, entire food grain, grain, processed food, everything, they are all transported by ships. And similarly, all the energy constituents like crude oil, thermal coal, liquefied natural gas, liquefied petroleum gas, everything is transported by ships. So, but for ships, there would be no, I mean almost no generation of electricity in many parts of the world. And that's why Metropolis had mentioned that half the world would also not survive because they would freeze, because there would be nothing to warm. There is another very important aspect of shipping that comes in terms of the environment. Many people are not aware that shipping is about 100 times more efficient than aviation, 6 times more efficient than road transport, 
twice more efficient than Velo is. So I keep on saying in many, many different forum I have mentioned that today's state of affairs in world economy and international trade cannot be envisaged without shipping. But supposing you allow your imagination to run wild and think of today's world to the same level of international trade without shipping, then not in a matter of years or in a matter of even months, but in a matter of days and weeks, our planet Earth will become uninhabitable by the humanity because of the pollution, because of the carbon footprint and the greenhouse gas emission. So again, this is another aspect. Finally, from the economic point of view, I think in a way shipping is a victim of its own success. When I joined shipping, well over four decades back, we were taught that for low valued commodities like crude oil, which is of course, by the way, the single largest commodity being transported across the seas. I mean, out of nine plus billion tons of uh, the seaborne commodity, crude oil alone is about two billion tons or thereabout. So for crude oil, for coal, the shipping freight constitutes close to 40% of the landed cost. This was what we had learned when we just joined shipping. Over the decades, the commodity prices have gone up. Of course, in the recent past, as you all know, commodity prices have crashed. But even then, compared to four or five decades back, the commodity prices have substantially increased. And because of the economy of scale and the technological evolution, the shipping cost has gone down. So much so, for these same low value commodities like crude oil, coal, etc., today the shipping freight would be 2 to 4 percent. From 40 percent, we have managed to bring down the shipping cost to 2 to 4 percent, and this has been the most significant contribution that shipping has made to the world trade and the world economy as such. Looking at the domestic front, unfortunately, we, I mean, you have all heard throughout the day about 7,500 kilometers of coastal, you know, I mean, uh, Indian coast, coast uh, being more than 7,500 kilometers, Indian, you know, riverways being about 15,000 kilometers. But unfortunately, the water transport caters to barely 6 to 7 percent of the domestic freight transportation as against 43-45% in Europe, 30% in China, 16% in USA, and about, maybe about, uh, about the same in Japan. So we have a long way to go, and if we are concerned about the environment, then the intermodal shift of cargo will be the best possible way to achieve that, because as I said, shipping is six times more efficient than road transport. So first and foremost, over long haul for bulk transportation, shipping is not only by far the most economic route, but also if you are concerned with the environment, that should be the only route which should be utilized for. Moreover, our road and rail network is completely choked. And any expansion of that needs land acquisition, which has become, as you all know, a huge issue, not only in India, in many parts of the world. So we have such a wonderful national resources, why not utilize that and have intermodal shift of transportation for the benefit of not only the country today, but for the posterity, for our children and grandchildren. So shipping, as I said, is extremely important for the global citizens because everything we consume from getting up in the morning till the time we go back to bed, if you just analyze, you will find either directly the commodity themselves or constituents of them have all come to Indian shore many a times from far away places and the only route of transport has been shipping. So I think in general, Shipping is not understood well. The failure has been of all the people concerned with the maritime sector. 
We have only preached to the converted. We have not really gone out, I mean, of our sector and really tried to project the significant work that we do for the world economy, for the national economy. And of course, we were talking, the last session we were talking about maritime security. Let me all remind you that more than one defense ministers in India, several level chiefs, and the national security advisor have admitted time and again that to improve maritime security of the country, the best way is to increase the share of Indian tonnage in carriage of both exit trade as well as the coastal trade. Moreover, due to, I mean, no, I mean by various studies conducted by Indian National Shipowners Association, it has been corroborated that shipping has a huge positive GPA gross value added to the economy. The increase to Indian tonnage not only improves coastal security, but it definitely gives a tremendous boost to the Indian economy per se, the GDP. And above all, as I said, it also definitely helps in improving the environment for the country, which is something which we must look at for not only because the planet Earth doesn't belong to one generation, it belongs to the posterity. So definitely we should be concerned with that and we should do something about it. So I think after a full day session, I know you have gone through many presentations. I don't want to delay you from wherever you are going next. I once again thank the organizers for this opportunity and I do hope that you get to see the topic of my presentation was strategizing optimization of the fleet but I thought that is a subject which will too technical and for the for the audience present at the moment I don't think that would have been very appropriate so I just thought I will talk in general a little bit about sharing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I just need you to stay for a minute on the stage. And we are very thankful to you. Uh, yes, it was the ports uh, in the summit. A uh, lot of the discussion was around ports, but as you said, that uh, uh, ports and shipping are complementary to each other. And uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing light on importance of uh, development of shipping sector. And uh, now I request uh, our CEO. Uh, this techno media Dr. Ravi Gupta to uh, present a memento to uh, Mr. Hazara for uh, giving this special address as a token of thanks and appreciation. Thank you very much, sir. So we were listening to Mr. Sabesachi Hazara, ex CMD Shipping Corporation of India, Chief and Chairman, MAPS. Thank you very much.